Hello, and welcome back to Unworthy History. Here on this channel, we try to bring you actual history that you can't find on TV anymore. Uh, and so today I'm going to continue the story of uh, a man whose shoes we are unworthy to fill. Uh, this is a man with very big shoes. That's right, it's Bigfoot Wallace. Uh, so I'm going to continue uh, his story today as told. Uh, to John C. Duvall. So Bigfoot Wallace wrote a lot of this down. Uh, he actually kept a really good journal uh, when he was out uh, basically roaming the hill country from the 1830s on to uh, the 1870s. Uh, and when we left him last time, he was with his adopted Indian family, and he had just listened to the legend that Black Wolf, uh, his brother, uh, told him about. Uh, and so now we're going to pick up there and see what happened to uh, Bigfoot Wallace next. When I had been about three months with the tribe, I began to long exceedingly to be once more with my own people. I lost all relish for forays and hunting expeditions. I became moody and discontented to such a degree that Black Wolf and his mother at length took notice of it. One day, when Black Wolf and myself were alone together in the lodge, he said to me, my brother, what is it that makes you so unhappy and discontented? For I have seen some time that you have had something on your mind. Has anyone mistreated you, my brother? No, said I, everyone has treated me well. But I will tell you frankly, my brother, for I knew he would not betray me. I am pining to see my own people again, and I am determined to attempt to make my escape into the settlements if it should cost me my life. My brother, said Black Wolf, I shall be very sorry if you leave us, and so will my old mother. But it is not strange you should wish to see your own people again, and you must go. I will help you all that I can to reach the settlements in safety. But be careful, said he, not to say a word about this to anybody, for if you should attempt to escape and be recaptured, nothing could save your life, and I should be put to death for having aided you. As Black Wolf advised me, I said nothing to anyone of my intention of leaving except to his old mother. She tried very hard to dissuade me from going, but finding I was resolute in my purpose, she gave up the point and sang two or three more of her bumblebee ditties over me at the parting, which seemed to lighten her grief considerably. She also made me a present of a dried terrapin's tail, which she said would protect me from danger of bullets in battle. I have kept the terrapin's tail out of respect for the old squaw, but I must say, in the many scrimmages I have been in since then with the Mexicans and Indians, I have had more faith in the efficacy of a tree or a stump to protect me from bullets than in this little charm she gave me. She also gave me a necklace made of the claws of the grizzly bear and porcupine quills, and a large copper ring to wear in my nose. Black Wolf and I made our preparations quietly for the journey, as we told them we were going into the hills to take a bear hunt and would be absent possibly several days. Black Wolf led the way, and Comanche and I followed, and the first day we traveled at least 30 miles from the village and camped together that night for the last time. In the morning before we separated, Black Wolf traced out upon the ground a map of the route I had to go, marking down upon it accurately all the ranges of the hills and watercourses I would pass on the way. He then bade me goodbye, and shouldering his gun sorrowfully, took his course back toward the village and was soon lost to sight among the hills. During my stay with the Indians, I had acquired considerable knowledge of the woods, and had to steer my course through them even when the sun was not visible, and in eight days after parting from Black Wolf, I arrived safely at the settlements, and thus ended my first expedition into the wilderness of Texas. Comanche lived with me till he died of old age, and he left a progeny behind him that, for trailing and fighting varmints and sucking eggs, can't be beat by any dogs in the state of Texas. So he finally uh, has returned to the settlements after first setting out uh, in the fall of 1837 with a surveying party, getting lost and then uh, almost dying at the hands of uh, the Indians in a sort of execution ritual. Uh, he was saved by an old woman who took him in as her own son. And then finally, after three months of staying with them and learning their language, uh, he longed to go home, and so he left. So if you want to see more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.